Welcome to the third lecture of the fifth week of the course in machine learning. This lecture uh, will be about inductive logic programming. Inductive logic programming, abbreviated ILP, is an efficient attempt to marry together the area of logic programming with techniques from machine learning, um, establishing what one can call learning with logic. Uh, one of the big advantage here with, with, with this mission is to create that kind of framework in which you can easily express uh, both deductive and inductive emphasis. Uh, in a very uniform way. So, um, if we look at the two main forms of inference then, first deduction, where we actually apply rules to facts and then can infer, infer other facts. It's a very traditional way and, and, and this kind of inference uh, it is, a, it is a cornerstone of, of what you do in, in, in logic programming. So actually we do not have to worry about that. The, the, the new thing with inductive logic programming is to see to that uh, we can also uh, make inferences the opposite way, that we can start with just a collection of facts and from those facts infer some rules. Given of course, as you hopefully have understood, that this will only have some credibility if we handle uh, a reasonably large amount of uh, instances uh, or data items to, to uh, work from. Inductive logic programming. The goal of ILP is to find hypotheses expressed as logic programming clauses from a set of positive and negative examples and in the presence of a domain theory where the latter two also are expressed in, in the same uh, logic programming uh, formalism. So what we have given is a set of positive and negative examples expressed in this observation language, we call it LE. Domain theory T Hypothesis language LH that delimits the clauses that are allowed in the hypothesis space and, and a relation covers. Covers is important because covers is the means for us uh, to uh, decide whether uh, a certain hypothesis covers a certain entails a certain example E, uh, considering also. Uh, the, the background theory. So given these pieces, uh, logic programming uh, has the aim to find a hypothesis H that covers all positive examples and no negative examples. Uh, so one can say that the, the, learning, the learning goals uh, of inductive logic programming expressed in this way <coughs> it, it is extremely uh, much aligned with 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 the, with the learning goals for all other kinds of inductive logic programming what is not covered in this is of course the, the basic capabilities of logic programming as such which uh, from the start uh, enables uh, deductive reasoning all, all, all executions of a logic, pure logic programming can be re regarded as an instance of deduction. Uh, so, um, I, I say this because if, if you only define inductive logic program as the inductive part, uh, uh, you, you, you forget the, the, the deductive side. Uh, and, and one of the big positive things with this area is that the combination is made possible. Let us now talk about some of the main advantages of ILP. Uh, actually, uh, the most important advantage is that by using the same framework, 
the language of logic, uh, of logic programming. It's possible to express examples, hypotheses, and domain theory or background theory in, in the same language. Also, the second thing, uh, important thing, is that one can handle deductive inference and inductive inference within the same framework. Because of the uh, ability for logic programming to uh, uh, support uh, structured data types and multiple relations in a convenient way, uh, it's also uh, it also makes ILP by inheritance from logic programming also very suited to handle domains where there is a need uh, 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 to conveniently uh, describe complex structures. One example of that is chemistry uh, and uh, the complex. Uh, uh, chemical structures that many applications uh, demand. Um, one thing that maybe is not uh, the biggest advantage because of course many other systems uh, and approaches have, have similar, uh, similar features is that some ILP systems also have the possibility to invent new predicates and add them to the domain theory. So, um, uh, so this is, this is a dynamic property that you also can introduce here. As have been said, the nice property of inductive logic programming is that everything is represented in the same way. So this means that hypotheses or examples facts, everything, in, in a way, are in the end represented at logic programming clauses. Uh, so, at the core of inductive logic programming uh, are the rules of specialization and relation, uh, and generalization. And these, these, these two rules or relations uh, connect hypotheses and facts. So one can say that a hypothesis, let's call it J, is more general than a hypothesis S, even only J, J entails S. And then S is also said to be more specific than J. So there are two uh, then kinds of, of, of relations that are used in different way. So let's start with a so-called specialization uh, rule or specialization relation. So if you have a didactive inference, didactive inference rule R that maps the conjunction of clauses J on the conjunction of clauses S, such as J entails S. This is a specialization rule. And the typical rule in, in inductive logic programming of that kind is called theta subsumption. If we set up a, 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 a hypothesis space uh, and structure that sp space using the theta subsumption specialization relation, uh, uh, this such space uh, will be a lattice. And for every pair of, of, of clauses uh, in uh, under the specific conditions of the theta subsumption, uh, there will exist a least upper bound uh, and a greatest lower bound with respect to the theta subsumption relation. So it's a pretty well ordered uh, structure. In, in this context, what we talk about is uh, inductive process that starts uh, where we start uh, the algorithms from the top. So we start with the most general hypotheses and those uh, hypotheses can then be specialized uh, in order to finally uh, reach, uh, reach the facts. The opposite direction is the generalization where we essentially start bottom up. 
and that uh, and so there we have a similar uh, generalis need a similar generalization rule and the typical ILP rule of generalization type is called inverse resolution there's also some variants of that there's something called inverse entailment but essentially for, for the for given how much we time we spent on this topic um, it's fine with that one example of a top-down and one of a bottom-up uh, operation and uh, in the same fashion uh, a typical generalization rule like inverse resolution uh, establish a, a least general generalization NGG uh, uh, f from positive examples. It's important to, to realize that, that in this context uh, of inductive logic program, induction is viewed as the inverse of deduction as far as possible. Uh, so so, so that, that's, that's the, the basis for the way of setting up algorithms and for designing the algorithms. Um, finally, one comment is that in uh, inductive logic programming, uh, the view uh, uh, of the process of induction is a search process. So this means that uh, what happens uh, in an inductive logic programming uh, um, induction process is that uh, we we search for the appropriate uh, hypothesis, but in a search space uh, structured through the generalization and specialization uh, relations. So therefore, we, when we design the algorithm, we have to marry together the properties of the search algorithm and the prop and specific properties of, of these uh, relations. We will now look at what is termed here the generic ILP algorithm. So first, uh, it should be repeated again that inductive logic programming views uh, the, the establishment of um, hypotheses as a search process. So, um, and there we, we of course always have our standard search process. It could be depth first, it could be breadth first, it could be best first, it could be anything. Okay, so, so that's the baseline. So all algorithms will be somehow phrased in a, in, in a search process context. Secondly, I already said that we uh, have two kinds of main generalizations that we use for structuring the hypothesis space. So we have a generalization uh, and we have a specialization uh, relation. And uh, the generalization is, is more relevant to use uh, in a, in a bottom-up perspective, in a bottom-up process, while the specialization is more relevant to use in a top-down uh, setting. Uh, this algorithm that we're going to look now at now could, should potentially be able to work uh, in both settings. Uh, so, so, so in both settings, we somehow initialize uh, the, the 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 set of uh, possible relevant hypotheses. Um, naturally, if we have a top-down approach, we would probably instantiate it uh, to the most general hypothesis possible, while we have a bottom-up approach, we will instantiate the hypothesis with actually the items of the case we, we handle. But this algorithm describes a very, very simple iteration, where in each uh, stage of the algorithm, we, 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 take, an hypo we take hypothesis, uh, from from this list of hypotheses, and we apply the inference rules uh, that we have chosen to use. And as I already said, for top down, it's typically uh, typically theta subsumption, and for um, for bottom up, it's typically inverse resolution. So those are the typical choices in inductive logic programming.
But anyway, independently of what we chose, we, we, we transform this, this list of, of current hypotheses through systematic apply and the shows and inference rules in one or the other direction. But in each step, after we generated a new set of hypotheses, it may be so that we generated uh, too, too many or redundant or uh, irrelevant uh, uh, hypotheses. So therefore, in every, every cycle, there is a prune step where we are using uh, some criteria uh, decide to uh, prune uh, some of the hypotheses in the list. And actually, then th this uh, uh, this goes on until uh, some stop criteria criterion is uh, uh, satisfied. On this slide, we we simply elaborate uh, a few of the items mentioned in the algorithm. So, as already stated. Uh, there, there are a few dimensions here. First is the, the direction of the process, whether it's top-down or, or bottom-up. And that, of course, influences how we initialize. We initialize hypotheses differently if we start top-down than in bottom-up. Also, um, that influences the choice of, um, uh, of, 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 of operation, inference rules or operations. So, but furthermore, uh, there is also a, a, another distinction. Uh, for every algorithm, we, we have to decide on which kind of basic search strategy we apply. So we can go for depth first, we can go for breadth first, we can go for best first, etc., etc. Et, 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 et and actually, it turns out that uh, as this algorithm is designed, or written, uh, it's actually two part, uh, places in the algorithm uh, where, uh, where our actions or choices decide um, uh, controls uh, the, constru uh, the search strategy that we actually plot. So actually, by um, the design of how, what we do when we, when we take away a hypothesis to delete an hypothesis to expand it, and also what we do when we actually do exactly when we prune something. Uh, that combined uh, choice uh, will control what search strategy we will have. So with 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 so, so with certain actions. Uh, in on these places in the algorithm, we will get a depth first search uh, strategy. Otherwise, we will get the breadth first, uh, and, and 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 so on. Um, final comment on this slide is that the stop criterion, of course, should state when we should finish. And actually, the most natural thing we stop when we uh, the main thing, uh, main condition under which we stop is that we achieved at least uh, one hypothesis in, in, in the hypothesis list that, that is good enough. There is one point in the algorithm uh, after the point where we actually uh, transformed uh, the, the hypothesis uh, space uh, in, in each iteration uh, based on an expansion, based on generalization and specialization operate. So we've got a new, new uh, uh, set of hypotheses. So then actually at that point we are supposed to look into whether it's possible to prune uh, the, the, the hypothesis set. So there are two main criteria we could use to uh, decide on what, what to prune. So the, the first case have to do uh, with this HA. We have hypotheses that actually do not cover all, uh, all, all uh, instances, which means uh, that it's too special. It's not general enough. So if the hypothesis we have is not general enough, and, but in our set, we have other hypotheses that are specializations of this one. Then 
it's not meaningful to pursue them because the, the first hypothesis we, we talked about is not general enough. So more special hypothesis than that one is not meaningful to keep. And similarly, if we have the situation that uh, the uh, hypothesis we have is uh, too general, which means that they also, it also covers some, some negative instances, then it's already too general. So therefore, if we have a generalization uh, of, of, of this hypothesis, it's, it's even worse. So it's not meaningful to keep either. There may be also other criteria, but these, I think, are, are the most primary ones to consider at, at this point. Um, we also had a stop or termination condition in this algorithm. So, so actually, the question is, when, when, when do we naturally uh, stop the iteration? Uh, so, one. Um, attempt, but I will be in this slide, to define something for a correct hypothesis. So then, uh, given that one have defined that, one could say that a natural stop condition for finding an hypothesis is whether, if you have established one correct hypothesis among your hypotheses. So, so a definition of correct hypothesis here is that it satisfies four requirements. So first, such an hypothesis should be sufficient in the sense that it covers all the positive examples we have at hand. Uh, it should also satisfy the requirement of necessity, which means that uh, if we take it away, not all positive examples are, are covered by any other hypothesis. So therefore, it's, it's needed. We will not have coverage without it. The third requirement is weak consistency, which means that um, the hypotheses do not contradict any element of the domain theory. The last part is strong consistency, which means that the hypotheses are not consistent with the negative examples. So if, if hypothesis satisfies all these requirements, we will call it correct. And then it could be a candidate for being that, uh, that the combined criteria could be candidate for, for, um, for using uh, for a termination criteria. Let's now look at a few examples. So the first pretty short example um, is about uh, that kind of algorithm that is based on generalization. Uh, this means, um, that means bottom-up um, process uh, where we use inverse resolution as the main generalization operator. So in this case, we start from the facts. So we start from the facts uh, that we have in the case. So father, so the Adam, uh, Adam is the father of Cain, uh, Adam is male, uh, Adam is the parent of Cain, and so on. So, so we use uh, these facts to infer the new rule. Father, uh, father is implicated by male and parent. Uh, so, and and as you can see, uh, it's natural to see that as an inverse resolution because at the top you can see the example of a revolution where father. Um, is implicated by male, the male Adam would uh, make us conclude that Adam is the uh, father of Kai. If we look in the other direction now, the top-down direction, um, the specialization operation is the theta subsumption, typically. Uh, so uh, what is exemplified here? First, uh, we, we take it for propositional, propositional logic, uh, is that you can see that the hypothesis space, naturally, for a very simple case in propositional logic, um, the subsumption operation generates a lattice. And also, you can see that every, ma every ma 
element in this lattice, every pair of elements in this lattice has uh, a least upper bound and a greatest lower. So uh, this is a very neat structure. Uh, as you can see in the next slide, uh, it's the same case. This also works for predicate logic. Uh, uh, so for, for logic programming, we will end with structures that look approximately uh, like this. To compare the top-down and bottom-up approaches, let's introduce another example. So here we have a simple example. We have an hypothesis, which is the bird, x. We have some positive examples, like um, that penguin is a bird, eagle is a bird, sparrow is a bird. And then we have some background knowledge saying um, the penguin, a sparrow, and an eagle lay eggs, as all birds do. However, only the sparrow and the eagle flies, and only the eagle has talents. So then, uh, if we first look at the uh, hypothesis space uh, for, for, for this example, from a bottom-up perspective, where we uh, have inverse resolution uh, as, the, uh, as the relation that uh, defines uh, the structure. So you can see here that uh, an eagle, being a bird, is defined by, by, by uh, the clause at the bottom, bird x. It's implied by legs, flies X, and stylus X. Okay. While bird sparrow uh, uh, need to be an instance of, of the more general concept bird of eggs with legs, eggs, and flies, and so on. So by starting, uh, by starting, by the facts, uh, the generic algorithm would uh, uh, construct hypothesis w w within this space. If we, the same fashion, look at um, the top-down search under theta subsumption, it, it will just be reversed. So hopefully this simple uh, example can give you a flavor of, of uh, the basic structures that always have to underlie uh, the inductive processes in inductive logic programming independently of whether uh, they are top-down or bottom-up. I want to wrap up this lecture by first giving you some examples of ILP systems and then give you two examples of important application areas. So first, um, uh, ILP systems. So you get four examples here. Foil, Provol, Golem, and Marvin. Uh, actually, two down, two top-down um, approaches and two bottom-up approaches. Uh, and as you also see, they represent different kinds of search strategies. So, Foil and Golem are hill climbing, uh, while Provol uh, have implemented the best. Uh, first uh, search. Um, probably the most well-known systems of all these are FOIL and uh, PROGOL. When we talk about application areas, the st two strongest applications there for inductive logic programming so far is um, actually natural language processing and bioinformatics. Maybe not surprisingly so, because these areas we have uh, high demand uh, for um, being able to represent complex structures. Uh, so therefore, logic programming uh, provide a very good basis for both describing uh, the examples, uh, the hypothesis, and the, the, the domain theory. And uh, one can say there have been few success stories in these areas over, over the years. 
this was the last part of this lecture. Thanks for your attention. Uh, the next lecture, uh, 5.4, will be on the topic of reinforcement learning. Thank you.